Hello and welcome everyone. Today we are going to discuss basic runway length and corrections to basic runway length. And uh, this video will be much more focused upon the corrections to be given on basic runway length. But still, we will uh, quickly discuss what is the basic runway length. So, the length of a runway based on the following assumed condition is known as the basic runway length. That is, number one, then that no wind is blowing on the runway. The aircraft is loaded to its full loading capacity. The airport is situated at sea level and the standard temperature is maintained along the runway. And the standard temperature of 15 degrees exists at the airport. So, while calculating the basic runway length, uh, mainly three cases are considered that is, normal landing, normal takeoff, and stopping an emergency. So, we will discuss all these cases in detail in another video. So let's quickly go to the correction of basic runway length. So mainly there are three corrections. The number one is correction for elevation. The second is correction for temperature and the third is correction for gradient. So the correction for elevation is given by ICAO that uh, the basic runway length should be increased at the rate of 7% per 300 mm 300 meter rise, rise in the elevation of airport above the mean sea level and um, uh, this this correction is required because the air density reduces as the elevation increases which in turn reduces the lift on the wings of the aircraft thus the aircraft will require more ground speed to rise to the air and uh, for achieving more speed the longer length of runway will be required the second correction is the correction for temperature so for this we need the reference air, air, airport reference temperature and it says that the runway length is increased at the rate of 1% for every 1 degree rise in airport reference temperature above the standard atmospheric temperature at the at that elevation or where the airport is situated. So we have to first calculate the difference between the airport reference temperature and the standard temperature. So, and the standard temperature at the airport can be determined by reducing the standard mean sea level temperature of 15 degrees at the rate of 6.5 degrees per thousand meter rise in elevation. So, it will depend where the airport is situated. If um, the airport is situated at a higher elevation, the correction will be less, and if it is at a lower level, the correction required will be more. We will see this while we are solving the problem so we can understand it much better. The third correction is correction for gradient. For this, we need the effective gradient, and the effective gradient is the maximum difference in elevation between the highest and the lowest point of the runway, and that divided by the total length of the runway. That is the effective gradient. Now, the the Federal Aviation Administration of USA states that after you have co corrected basic runway length for elevation and temperature. It should be increased at the rate of 20% for every 1% of the effective gradient. And the main reason for correction for gradient is that as the gradient becomes steeper and steeper, um, the aircraft will require more energy and um, it will require a longer length of runway to attain that ground speed and to generate the required lift. So let's go to the problem now. So the problem given to us is to calculate the actual length of runway from the given data. It says that the airport elevation is at uh, 100 meters, that is reduced level, and uh, that is the level above the mean sea level, that is 100 meter. And the airport reference temperature is 28 degrees Celsius, and the basic length of runway which was calculated earlier is 600 meters, and the highest point along the length of the runway is 98.2 meters it is again the reduced level and the highest sorry the highest point along the runway is 98.2 meters and the lowest point along the length of the runway is 95.2 meters as you can clearly see that uh, the runway is situated around 2 to 3 meters below the airport elevation so let's start off with the problem the first thing we will correct the basic length of the runway will be for the correction of elevation so
so as per the ICA or recommendations we have to increase the basic runway basic length of runway by 7% for every 300 meter rise in the elevation of airport above the sea level so in this case our uh, airport elevation is 100 meters only so the correction for elevation let's say LE will be we have to increase it by 7% so that is 7 by 100 multiplied by for every 300 meter rise 300 meter rise but our airport elevation is only 100 meters multiplied by the basic length that is 600 meters so we get 14 meters now the actual length after correction for elevation would be 600 plus 14 that is 614 meters now the second correction is the correction for temperature now for this correction you need the standard temperature the standard temperature at the airport is 15 degrees celsius but our airport elevation is 100 meters so this has to be corrected again now as we discussed earlier the standard temperature at the airport can be determined by reducing the standard mean sea level temperature of 15 degrees celsius that is this at the rate of 6.5 degrees per thousand meter rise in the elevation we have to reduce the standard temperature for every thousand meter rise in the elevation so that is 15 degrees celsius minus 6.5 degrees for every 1000 meter rise but our elevation is only 100 meters so that gives us a value of 14.35 degrees celsius so this is the standard temperature now we have to find out the difference between the airport reference temperature and the standard atmospheric temperature so our at standard airport reference temperature is 28 degrees celsius so that is 28 degrees celsius minus 14.35 degrees celsius gives us 13.65 degrees celsius now the correction is that uh, we have to increase the length of length of the runway by uh, by 1% for every 1 degree rise in the temperature so the correction for temperature would be for every 1% increase by 1% for every 1 degree rise so that is upon 1 13.65 upon 1 into the length of the runway which we got earlier that is 614 meter that gives us 83.81 meters let's say 84 meters so that was the correction for elevation and the temperature and the third correction would be correction for gradient so the correction for gradient for the correction of uh, gradient we need the effective gradient for that we have these two given values the highest point of the runway is 98.2 meters and the lowest point is 95.2 meters so the effective gradient e would be 98.2 minus 95.2 over 600 meters that is the basic length of the runway that is 3 by 600 which gives me 5 into 10 raised to minus 3 so this gradient is in percentage so that would be 0.5 percent now as per the recommendation the correction is that we have to increase the length of the runway by 20 percent for each degree each percentage rise of the effective gradient that is for every one percent for every one percent increase in the effective gradient we have to increase the basic length of the runway by 20%. So the formula would be for uh, LG equals we have to increase it by 20%. So 20 by 100 multiplied by for every 1% increase in effective gradient but ours is 0 0.5 multiplied by the length of the runway which we calcul calculated earlier that is 698 meters 
this value is the addition of the basic length plus correction for elevation and correction for temperature so that's a 69.8 meters let's take 70 meters so if we add all of these we get the actual length of runway Six ninety-eight plus seventy. That's seven hundred and sixty-eight meters. So after you do all of this, there's a check. It says that uh, the total correction for elevation and temperature should not be more than thirty-five percent. So the total correction for elevation and temperature was LE plus LT. That was fourteen for elevation and for temperature it was 84 so it was 98 meters and the total basic length of the runway was 600 meters so it says that you don't have to uh, sorry the total correction for elevation and temperature should not increase more than 35 percent so in our case it is 98 by 600 into 100 that is 16.33 percent so that is less than 35 percent so that's okay i hope you like the video and uh, if you have any doubts or uh, you want to ask any questions please feel free to ask in the comment section and if you want some uh, more explanation on more topics on any civil engineering subject please feel free to ask thanks and have a good day